Hello everybody, how are you doing? I just pulled back into the garage and normally I back in, but I went ahead and pulled in today because I went to a tool sale and uh, I'm gonna show you guys what I got. This is my tool haul. Uh, <laughs> what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull all this out of the car and we're gonna lay it out in the driveway. I wanna kinda dust it all off. Uh, there were some spiders and stuff. Right now they're not active, but I wanna make sure there's no eggs that I'm gonna bring into the garage, introduce that to my my shop so uh, we'll pull all this out we're going to lay it out on the driveway kind of dust it off i'll go through each of the boxes i'll lay everything out and i'll show you guys what i got uh and uh i may even share with you the price i paid for all of this amazing stuff i just finished unloading my trunk i've got everything laid out on top of my table saw we're going to go in there in a second and take a look at it uh, but i want to show you the green hose that i had in the trunk and talk about that a little bit this is a 12 foot section of six inch diameter hose. Now on the bottom of my dust collector, which I've had up here in the loft for about two and a half years, that is a, a six inch outlet. So what the plan is, I'd like to cut a hole in the bottom of my loft big enough for that hose to fit through, drop it down and into the collection receptacle. That way the dust collector stays up top on the loft. It is controlled by a remote. I can turn it on and off at will. Uh, and anything collected will drop down to a ground level container that I can more easily empty than having to climb up onto the loft and carry a big bag or carry a, a, a barrel down to be able to empty it. So that was a huge score for me today. A three foot piece of eight inch, I did not find the six inch that I needed, but a three foot piece of eight inch is $90 on the internet. So that alone was a steal. Here's a quick pan of all of the items that uh, I received. And I'm just going to start over here on the left hand side going through some of the stuff uh, and let you know what it is. One of the items which I'm really not sure what I'll do with was this little package. It's got two round mirrors. Uh, they're four inch mirrors and uh, I'm not sure what I'll do with those but uh, they're here in the shop. I was happy to get these Parker ink refills. I can use them for some of the pens that I make. Got a fairly nice selection of blanks. You can see there's some beautiful acrylics there. Um, a few more acrylics here. Got a curly maple blank. It's really a beautiful blank. Uh, let's see, I don't know what that is. What is that? Oh, that, that's an abalone blank. Beautiful. This is stabilized. I do not know what it is. Green stabilized, this red stabilized. This is just a blank of what looks like maybe Purple Heart that had already been drilled out with a seven millimeter. There were 49 of these little, it might be 50, I might be wrong on my count, but uh, you put a pin in these and uh, they're nice for display or if you're sending a pin to somebody, a couple of them have dried rubber band on them. Uh, I think that'll probably scratch off, but if not, it'll just be great for me keeping some of my pins safe in the house. Uh, probably, well, all of the ones on the outside had a little rubber band on them. So probably about a quarter of them uh, have a little rubber band mark on them. The rest are nice and clear. Got all the caps back here. I counted 49. There may have, it may have been a set of 50, I'm not sure. I got some glue tips. These come in handy if you're trying to get into tight spaces. There were two bottles of Stickfast Activator, which are both good. There were three bottles of glue, thin, medium, and thick. Now, I'm a little concerned about the glue. I don't know how old it is, but take a look. You can see that, well, this, this one is, is yellow and looks like it's dried up. So the glue is probably a wash. I'll end up throwing that away. I did get some debonder. There's nothing wrong with that. It'll still work. I ended up getting some micro mesh pads. I'm happy to have those. I have quite a few micro mesh pads, but this is something that I can put back and will always get used in the shop. I ended up getting two sets of these. Now these are actually nice. This is micro mesh. And uh, what this is, you put a sponge behind this and you can use it for sanding curves or in tight areas like if you did a cove or something. Uh, and it's a little easier sometimes to get in than maybe uh, some of the uh, standard micro mesh pads. I got this little set of what looks like, these are little knives like and little forks possibly, some kind of tools. I think you just turn a little handle for them. I'm gonna have to look up the instructions. I do know that they came from Berea Hardwoods, so I'll look into that. I really don't know what these are. <laughs> I have no idea. Uh, they may, I, I'm not even gonna venture to guess. They're just little rubber stoppers and um, you can actually, they're, they're, they're hollow. So if anybody has any idea what those are, uh, shoot me a comment uh, down below and let me know. I adjusted the camera down a little bit to make sure I wasn't out of frame. Uh, I got some chain here and what looks like it might be some uh, little ornament tops for making ornaments. We got some lobster claws. Those are kind of nice to have. 
Got some little jump rings. I got two packs of transmissions. So these are about 20 transmissions for uh, slimline pins, seven millimeter. There were some spare tubes. Uh, I think they're three eighths. I'm not exactly sure. I'll have to mic them. Got a couple of really pretty bands. I might be able to use these on some of my kitless pins. Don't know. And a bunch of bushings. That's, I don't know what all these bushings are for. Some of them are labeled. Um, that just says 8B bushings. I'm going to have to look online and kind of, I'll mic out the sizes to try to figure out what they are. These are uh, some rollerball for the Grande bushings. This is a nib for a, um, a fountain pen. Grabbed a couple of small rulers that were just laying in a pile. Uh, rulers are always handy to have around for straight lines for measuring something quick. I figured I could throw one close to each lathe. Uh, he gave me one of these. This is a uh, mandrel saver he happened to have laying around. I think this might be part of a kaleidoscope. I'm not sure. Uh, it says something. It just says ROC, Republic of China, on there. Got a couple of uh, bottle stoppers. That one's kind of pretty. It's got a flower in it. Back here, I've got a nice little pin stand. It's kind of a, kind of an S shape, and it uh, looks like it's two-tiered, maybe kind of like that, where you can uh, have, you know, I don't know, maybe it looks like 20 pins or so on there. Uh, we'll kind of go through some of the blanks in a minute. What I'd like to do is sort them out by type and kind of give an idea of, you know, six of these, eight of these, whatever. So I'm going to hold off. This, this pile is all pin blanks. I also got a pepper mill. Now, I've never turned a pepper mill, and I don't have any of the bits, so I'm going to have to uh, look into that and decide, is it really worth, uh, do I want to spend all the money to buy the parts or the bits and tooling for just one? But we may do a pepper mill in the future. I'm not 100% sure. What we have here are kaleidoscope egg stands. That's what I think this is part of. I think it's part of a kaleidoscope egg. I've got a number of duck calls. One, two, three. Looks like four black ones, uh, two fluorescent orange ones. Uh, here are some of the, that's the duck call tooling kit to make them. So I'd like to try making a duck call at some point. And then I've got some of the, uh, this is, these are the lanyards that the duck calls hook onto. I don't know what these are. I thought at first they might be for the spinning tops, but I'm thinking they might actually go with uh, these egg stands to set the egg on. Uh, we'll have to figure that out as we, as we progress. Back in the back here, I have one of these, so I really didn't need this, and it's used, but it's in really good shape. This is a heavy-duty uh, vise for drilling pin blanks, and it's much nicer than the one I have, and that's why I went ahead and picked it up. It has a removable wooden block, so basically this stops you from, hopefully, busting the bottom of your acrylic blanks, and you can replace that with just another piece of wood or MDF. Below this, and I didn't get them out of the box. I'm afraid to lift them up because I don't want to drop these uh, F-clamps, but there are um, two additional pin stands for displays or acrylic, clear acrylic pin displays. I picked up four of these F-clamps. Now, these are not, you know, super expensive. These are probably $10, $12 F-clamps, uh, but it's always nice to have them around, especially when I'm making those chaos blanks. I just never have enough clamps. I thought this would be really nice to have. I have one of these, but the one I have is cheap one. a cheap one. This is a circle cutter for your drill press, and this appears to be a really nice one. I have never made one of these. I've never even seen one of these. They're called jar openers, and I got 10 of them. And basically, you turn a handle for them, and somehow, see how they kind of open and retract? You put it on a jar lid and you twist it. I've got some little rubber feet here that grip and you, you just turn a little knob of a handle and you twist it, it grabs a jar top and allows you to uh, more easily remove it from the jar. So we'll have to look at uh, some instructions. These came from Berea and uh, we'll look at some instructions and see um, see how, how these things work and how to turn a handle for them. That might be kind of a fun little project to turn. Dropping down a little bit, uh, I picked up just a couple of, these are inexpensive dial calipers, but uh, they'll work great for just around the shop. And I figured it'd be nice to have one uh, by each of my lathes. I have one, but I'm constantly carrying it back and forth and losing it. I picked up this little Rockler miter slot hardware set. Uh, it's kind of neat. These go into the tracks of say your table saw or your bandsaw. And uh, when you tighten the, uh, the knob down, these expand and lock into place. Now I don't really have a use for those right away, but you know, you can build all kinds of jigs for your saw. So these will come in handy, hopefully at some point in the future. I got this little four inch, whoa, four inch uh, dust collection plate. I'm hoping to uh, get started on my dust collection. I've needed to do it for a long time. I just have not done it. 
what I knocked over here, there we go, is a dial indicator. Uh, pretty happy to have this. I can use this on my metal lathe. Um, I've needed one, and this is a brand new one. It's never even been used. So I'm super excited to have that. I got a bunch of these acetate brushes. Um, these are nice. I use them on my lathe for um, spreading uh, the oil on the part, so that way I can keep keep the cutting uh, cutting head cool. I also use them for spreading glue. They are super, super handy to have. Back here, I got a Japanese pull saw. Um, this is kind of neat. It's a 180 millimeter Japanese pull saw. Uh, these are just handy to have. You know, they're, they're just, they make such a clean cut. Uh, if you put like a dowel in a project, you can just, you know, cut the dowel right off super smooth with the surface. So I'm glad to add that to my collection. I picked up this depth gauge. Uh, it can be used for table saws, it can be used for routers, whatever. I have I have another one, uh, and I think it may even be by the same company, but it doesn't have this nice little this nice little um, uh, truss around it, which is great because my other one, when I get right up next to the blade on my table saw, if I don't have zero clearance, it will actually it's difficult to use for the to measure the height of the blade. This one, being that it has such a wide gap uh, between the legs will make that a lot easier. And the final thing that I picked up was, this is a universal small parts, uh, a small port hose kit uh, for dust collection. You can use it on circular saws, you can use it on palm sanders, uh, pretty much anything. It's kind of nice, brand spanking new. I mean, look how clean it is. Not even, not even been used, so I'm excited to have that. I'm going to take just a few minutes. I'm going to clean this tabletop off and try to put some of the stuff away, you know, where I think it needs to be in the shop. When I'm done, I'll come back, I'll sort out all those pin kits, and we'll talk about which type of kit we have and how many of each. So I'm kind of anxious to see that uh, because that's that was what I really went over to get. That's the bread and butter of, of uh, this entire uh, load of tools. So I will keep you posted on that in just a moment. I got everything put away and I've gone through and sorted all the kits and I'm really happy. I've got six of these uh, El Grande Rollerball kits with Mother of Pearl blanks. And the nice thing about these is they did come with a full set of bushings. So I'll have no trouble turning those. I got six of the Elegant Sierras. It's a really nice looking kit. Take a look. I don't know how well you can see. There you go. Can I get that reflection off of there? This is a Elegant Sierra click pin. So I'm really happy about having that one. And it's kind of a brushed chrome look. I got five of the Sierras. Now these are just standard Sierras. They're in a black and chrome. And they are also a click pin, which will be fun. Uh, I've been wanting to do some clicks in the, uh, the Sierra style, just to see. A lot of people ask about that, and I've never done one, so those are gonna be a lot of fun to turn. There are six Europeans, which these kind of remind me of a slim line. However, take a look at the center ring, how big it is. And then they have this nice little, little uh, rounded cap. So I think it's a lot like uh, a Sierra, but just a little, you make them a little thicker. There are five of the Tetra Stylus pens, and these are in gunmetal and gold. I don't know what they'll look like. I have no idea what that kit looks like. There's also five of the Tetra Stylus kits in uh, gold and chrome. So, you know, I don't know what these look like. I'm gonna have to go online. Luckily, they're a Woodcraft kit. It'll be really easy to find information on them and uh, really easy to get bushings. These rolls here, I don't know what these are. Uh, I'm gonna have to do some research. There is a part number on there. Uh, I've got five that are fountain pen, and I've got five over here that are rollerball. Uh, we'll do a little research tonight, see what they are, and uh, see about getting some. Actually, I think I have the bushings. Uh, these bushings match up the 41788. Uh, however, it, it's not specific to any one of the numbers, so it could, uh, it could be specific to one kit and not the other, because like I said, these are fountain pen, these are rollerball, but we'll do a little research and figure that out. I've got one of these. This is a fountain pen, and I don't know anything about that one. And I've got the exact same kit. Or no, I take that back. It's not the exact same kit. It is a different part number, but that's a roller ball. There are several other sets of bushings here, and these bushings very well could go with these kits. I just don't know if that's the case. And there is, I need to look this up and see if I, what I can find about it. This is a, a fountain pen conversion uh, for 
one of these kits. I'm thinking it's probably these sets over here, but I'm not 100% sure. So all in all, I ended up getting 45 pin kits and a decent selection of bushings. And I, I couldn't be happier with the number of kits that I got. I'm looking forward to uh, turning these and uh, making pins and hopefully some videos for you guys. In the beginning of this video, when I showed everything in the trunk of the car, I mentioned that I might even let you guys in on how much I paid for all of this uh, amazing stuff. And I've decided that I'm going to tell you, but not right away. Let me show you what I'm thinking. I've decided to have a little fun. We're going to have a small contest, a giveaway. Now, here's the way it works. You get one chance, not two, not three, one. If you enter more than once, I will disqualify you. Okay, uh, so what I want you to do is in the comments below, I want you to put an estimate in U.S. dollars. Yes, I said U.S. dollars because if a, a follower of mine who is subscribed to my channel guesses and wins, I will ship them uh, overseas to you. Now, here's the way it works. Go into the comments and comment how much you think I paid for everything that you saw in this video. At the end of the week, today is March 1st, 2020. So Saturday morning, 12 a.m. Saturday morning. So 12 a.m. on March 7th, 2020, I'm gonna stop the contest. I will go back and look at all the entries. And when I find the person who guessed the right amount or the person who guessed closest to the right amount, um, I'm gonna award them a little prize. Now, if multiple people guess the same amount, I will give you on a live video, or on a, it won't be live, but I'll do a video, and I will list the names. These three people guessed the right amount, and we'll have a quick drawing, and we'll draw a winner from those three people, and I will send out this little prize that I'm about to show you. Let me turn the camera around, and we'll take a look. If you win the contest, you will get this bottle stopper blank. one of the jar opener kits and uh, this should be a fun one. I'm not sure how these are made yet. I'm gonna have to do some research, but uh, with that part number, should be able to find it fairly easily. I think it came from Berea. And you're gonna get this acrylic pen blank. I think it's called Smoke Rings. So remember, the contest ends at 12 a.m. on March the 7th, 2020. So be sure to comment below. Remember, one entry per person. It starts today, March 1st, 2020, and it ends 12 a.m. March 7th, 2020. So if it is after March 7th, 2020, please feel free to comment on the video. But if you guess a dollar amount, you are not going to be eligible because the contest will already be over. So the winner will guess the exact amount that I paid for everything or be the closest to that amount. In the event of a tie, we will have a tiebreaker drawing here on a future video. Guys, I know I have not been super prolific with videos. I hope you enjoyed this video. I had a great time shopping for this stuff and putting this together for you. Um, I have plans. I have so many videos that I want to do. I want to get back to turning the components on the metal lathe. I want to do some videos about uh, my new lathe and turn some kitless pins back there, turn some of these blanks. It's just my life and you guys are aware of it, I've talked about it before, has taken a turn and I am extremely busy right now. I'm hoping that I am seeing some light at the end of the tunnel because I really wanna get back to making videos because I personally just enjoy making the videos and interacting with you guys through the comments um, and all of the private messages, etc. So, you know, keep those coming. I'm still here, I'm not going anywhere. I'm just in limbo right now, but we will be back. I would truly like to thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I want you to know that you are always welcome in my shop. Come back and see me again real soon and have a great evening, everybody.